out for business. Uh, I don't need it, and I, I certainly don't want it. I'm here because I want to save the NHS, believe it or not, because in the last two years, our politicians, contrary to what they've been saying about saving the NHS, have destroyed it. And now let me come to what, I, what do I mean by what should we do now to save the NHS? You're absolutely right. There are thousands of healthcare workers and professionals, experts, who actually work in the NHS as well as the private sector, yes. who can help a lot of the people out there who are suffering with disease or morbidity. And you just need to look at the figures. You know, we're at 6 million now on the waiting list, up uh, 1.5 million. Yep. And the projected forecast is between 9 to 10 million in a couple of years. So much for saving the NHS. They've destroyed it. But Ahmed, and, but Ahmed I understand all of that. Yeah. And I've been arguing that here for seven or eight months on this show. And I've also been arguing that the private sector can move very quickly. Yeah. When it comes to upping capacity, it's more difficult for the public sector to move. But realistically, can the private sector expand quickly enough, fast enough? Because as we're going... Whatever happens, even if this is the end of the pandemic, the numbers waiting for procedures are going up, not down. Can the private sector move quickly enough? Absolutely. They're reactive and they've got the capacity, the facilities. And listen, money talks. And there'll be arguments that it should be for people who want to have insurance and have a rebate. You'd be surprised. More than half the patients that I'm seeing are self-funding. Don't deny them. And it's not the case that they're all middle class Tory voters. We're talking about working class people, hardworking people who are suffering, who are paying out of their own pocket to get health care. Why should they not have access to health care through the private sector and through a tax rebate? Now, some people might say, well, where are all these money trees going to come from? Well, the government's found a forest of money trees funding COVID, 400 billion odd, 9 billion on failed PPE, 4 billion on the tax fraud. So much money has been wasted. They've got a forest of money trees. Like one little forest money tree, one little money tree of 6 billion, 8 billion would make a massive difference to thousands of people, not just elderly people. And I think that's ageist. Why deny? Why discriminate? There are many people, children I'm seeing, with disease and disability. We should offer access well, to you, healthcare you, to you, everyone. You, Ahmed, you've declared your interest in this and thank you for doing that. Finally, quickly, mm. can the private sector be able to perform two or three million procedures every year? I think absolutely. If the government's serious about this and they're going to put aside all their nonsense, nonsensical policies to date and be serious about patients and safety and health care, then yes, we can do it. But they need to stop politicising the NHS. It's not a football. This is not a game. Patient safety, patient health is not a game.